Hi guys, I'm back and I hope you're all doing great. I'm sorry I've been around for ages, just life's just been getting in the way. But I have been working on free planes and epics, so I've got plenty to tell you in this latest update video I'm about to show you right now. So we have coming up epic structure and its AdSense model. I'm going to be talking about the siege rules, the new siege rules and showing some of the models I've made up for it. Soldiering and battle stress, basically I've combined them together. Engulfing new rule, which is basically units engulfing characters. Um, the dwarf colour system, which I think you'll find quite interesting because you can really customise your own dwarves. And the story of Kel, which hopefully will be coming soon. Right, well, Epic is something I've always done for fun. Uh, it's never going to earn me much money, and I don't mind sharing it. But I do want it to earn some money to cover its own costs. So basically, I've been monetizing my site. And here we are. As you can see, or you will see anyway, I have itemized everything. So everything now has its own download page. So if you want the rules, this is its download page. There you can see the adverts. And that's the restructure really done in a nutshell. What I've also done is that I've itemized all the rest of the rule books, which I'll show you now. Just, just go down there. And I've now optimized all the models as well. So they all have their own download page. At the moment, I haven't got everything up because I just don't have time so I'm doing one or two models a week maybe or three models a week but I want the rules to work in tandem as well so the idea is is that you're gonna get the Grand Guard and you're gonna go to their army list and you're gonna click in the link in the in their PDF army list and it would take you to their download page and then you would download the models so that's the idea anyway and that's what I'm working on at the moment siege rules right so here they are. This is what the new rule book's going to look like by the way. It's got a new fancy header and footer, but this is what we're concentrating on, the siege rules. This is the crux of the siege rules, this diagram. So the idea is is that not only do you design your own army list if you're a defending player, but you also design your, your castle. And however you put down the castle is how the rest of the board is laid out. So the castle goes down, then the what you call it, no man's land is determined and then round that is the attacker's deployment zone and and the rules haven't been game tested yet but they're looking good and they're in place and here are its new models this is just a standard wall it's got a variety of add-ons put onto it from when I was designing it as you can see here so these are detachable or you can add on or you can change them so you can really mod up your own castle it's going to come with three different skins as well I think so this is what I call a white model this is um, more wall this is a 45 degree turn so this basically clips on or sticks on with a bit of blue tack or glue or you can even use magnets if you want this is a tower which you can then add on as well let me just get there's a little guy just to add a bit more perspective let's have a look at it a little more as you can see so you can do anything you want the it's really designed around the free planes rules so you can design your own castle that's the general idea of it this is the castle gate as you can see it's uh, fully operational it's got all the workings there let's remove the brake open the drawbridge and yet yeah, those little doors open as well so you just there we go and if you want to close the drawbridge you can do that as well let's just wind it up it's going to take a bit though because it takes a while so yeah it's this is still being designed it's in its white model stage there's its brake back on but it's fully operational and it should be available with the rules when they're ready hopefully so yeah that's it all together Soldiering and battle stress. I always wrestled with these two systems. Soldiering determines how good you are as a warrior. Battle stress determines if you're going to stay and fight or you're going to flee. The problem with soldiering and battle stress, two different systems, so they didn't work very well together. The other thing was that it was so rare for you to take a soldiering check. No one could remember the stats, not even myself. So we had to stop the game, look at the rules, start it up. It interrupted game flow. It was no good. A bit ago though, I sorted out the battle stress or made it better by replacing it with, um, uh, it used the same math, but it was a dice 
counter system. So what you would do is you build up battle stress dice and then you'd have something called morale dice and you'd roll them off against each other and whoever got the highest score would win. And it was a really it is a really good system. Uh, but the, what you need with that to work though, all pieces have to have a basic free morale dice for the system to work. But my idea was to swap the free basic morale dice with the soldiering. So pieces with a higher soldiering would have more basic morale dice. We call them soldiering dice now. And it works really well. So it's time for a demonstration. Here is an Alancin unit. This is an elf imperial unit called the Enforcers. There's an elf hero. And the imperial elves have a soldiering six. And the Alanceans have a soldiering far. They're both in combat with each other. The Alanceans have been flanked in their side. The Alanceans have lost six models altogether. Whereas the Enforcers in the combat have lost just two. Now, each battle stress point is worth one dice each. Now, in this combat, we can see a flank, which is worth four battle stress dice. And for every two models killed, that's worth another battle stress. So that's six models equals three dice in total. The enforcers have only lost two models, so they get one dice. And so this is what you basically need to work out combat. Whoever's got the most battle stress loses the combat. The Alanceans have lost that, they've got the they've got murdered. So the enforcers have to roll the battle stress dice to break the Alanceans. Now this is where the soldiering comes in. The soldiering of the Alanceans is four dice. They also get another dice for a banner. And so now they have to roll their uh, soldiering dice. So And every four plus is a pass. So they only get one pass. Doesn't look good for the Alanceans. But, you know, that's the way it goes. Yeah, and the enforcers have completely murdered them. So they get four passes, and so the Alanceans basically disappear and flee. And that is how the new system works. Engulfing. This is a rule designed to help units deal with uber hard characters who go around just destroying everything. And here we have a lovely Grand Guard unit. They usually get two attacks each, but for this example, we're going to pretend they've got one attack each. Now, unfortunately for them, they are in combat with an uber hard character called an Immortal. An Immortal has five attacks, it hits on twos, and they won't even get a save against it. They don't, won't really stand much of a chance against that Immortal. And they would only muster up about four attacks against him, and that would be a real problem. Now, common sense would say is that they'd all basically encircle him or engulf him. So, that is what they're going to do in this new rule. So hang on, we're just going to use the magic of video and speed this up a little bit. There we go. And you put him in the middle like that. And that would greatly improve the amount of attacks against, or we'd have to move it forward as well to represent the unit going round. That would greatly improve the amount of attacks, not just four, but 12 attacks they would get. And that would greatly help. Now, the downside is that, that the unit would have a rear all the way around it. So it could get flanked very easy or hit in the rear very easy. But apart from that, it would help deal with these nasty characters who wander around thinking they own the place. The dwarf colour system. Now, I've been working on the dwarves. Sort of work stopped at the moment because I've gone back to the rules and the siege game. Here are the dwarves, by the way. I know you guys have seen this before. Um, but I'm just showing you this as an example. This is what the dwarves look like, basic. But a lot of people like to mess about with the colours and come up with their own different, you know, colour systems and everything. Now, a lot of people ask for different layers and everything, but that takes a lot of time. So what I've done is I've created something called handle prints. Here they are. These are the handle prints, and I know they look hideous. Green and blue just don't work with the dwarves whatsoever. But this is why I've done it. I've done it because the computer or whatever graphics program you are using can very easily pick them out because blue and green are not used. So what we can do is here, we can isolate the color. So we're going to isolate blue. Just move it around, get it all so you can see what's going on. 
there we go so we've isolated blue and we can change it to whatever color we want we can even change the shade as well so we can have it as black and white so you can do a lot so we're going to pick black here and because I've done two handle colors what I call handle colors anyway I don't know what you'd actually call them we're going to isolate the green now there we go and we're going to change the green to uh, I stick it. I'm going to change it to yellow I think yellow so black and yellow and as you can see it'll change the entire print sheet so it doesn't take any skill whatsoever a little bit of knowledge and you can edit you can come up with your own color schemes for the dwarves no problems at all with minimal effort very very little effort now I don't have time to go back and do the rest of the prints but all the new prints in future will have their own handle prints so you can mod them and do it if you want and I know not everyone's got a copy of Photoshop but you can use GIMP and you can do exactly the same thing in GIMP and for totally free so when I release the dwarves I'm going to do a tutorial video using GIMP to show you how to do it okay that's it for that and lastly Cal uh, what can I say about Cal um, all the artwork you've seen today is from Cal the story of Cal which me and my girlfriend who is a very talented artist Zaina Ayub have been working on together so I'm looking forward to bringing you that video soon it's just going to be a short narrated illustrated story which I hope you guys enjoy so keep your eyes out for it and that's it guys I hope you really enjoyed this video if you've got anything to say please comment below if you like what I'm doing please like and share this video and do all the other great stuff if you want any of the models or the rules please go down to my site you can freely download them it's epicwargaming.com I'll leave you a link below and lastly I'd like to say a special shout out to my girlfriend Zaina thank you very much for all that artwork honey I love you right then guys take care and goodbye